I'm daydreaming of a day. In our last travel video, we left off when we were just boarding the cruise ship for our cruise to Alaska. Yeah, and that's the first time where we finally got to meet up with our friends Phil and Stacy, who also brought some friends of theirs. When we got there, we got our luggage back quickly and we got into our room pretty fast as well. Yeah, and our room was pretty nice. We had a mini suite with a balcony all in a row with all of our friends. So we asked them to open up our patio door so we were all connected on the outside. <laughs> nice. Took you long enough to get out here. We're keeping the tour. <laughs> we, we wanted everyone to see the awesome room. I'm daydreaming of the day. I'm not wasting my time. Don't wait till I come alive. Set away. I'm going to set away. Like being in the sun. Leaving port and going under the Lion's Gate Bridge was really neat. From the ship, it looked like we just barely cleared it. Got all the doors open for all people that are on this cruise. After we got through Vancouver Bay, we got settled into our rooms and we met up with everyone for dinner. We were all pretty exhausted, so that was about it for that night. We did just hang out on our balcony for a little bit and look at the views. This is really nice. Mountain, water, it's a combination you just don't see a lot. Day one was basically just a day at sea with pretty crappy weather and we couldn't really see off of the balcony. So we just had a lazy day resting up and we got some laundry done because the laundry facilities were all open. We decided to order in. Yeah, with that awesome French onion soup we had last night in the dining room, we requested that they went down and got it for yes, us. Yes, yummy. Real dinner's coming. I was gonna say, we have more food <laughs> coming. Put your hand in my hand, darling, say go. Keep your eyes on the... Phil has to come to Alaska before he puts on pants. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Only they got me in pants in Alaska. He's gotta make it all the way to Alaska first. <laughs> After our full day at sea, we arrived to our first port of call, which was Icy Strait Point in Huna, Alaska. One thing that was really cool there is as we're pulling into port, we could see a whole bunch of bald eagles flying around and doing things from our balcony. So Chad got out the zoom lens so you could get a better look at them. Yeah, we can hear them too. It's kind of, I don't think eagles sound like what I thought they sounded like. They don't like. sound like what I thought they sounded like <laughs> either. Yeah, it's kind of a haunting sound almost and it's very high pitched. I just didn't expect it. You could also see a gondola that is running to take people to the top of the mountain, but it was also pretty cloudy up there. We tried to learn a little bit about this first port before getting off the ship. Welcome to Alaska. I'm off the boat. <laughs> Feels like we've been on there for days. We, this, is our, this is only our second day. So we are officially feet dry in Alaska. See? <laughs> they might not be so dry soon. Yeah. But we are pretty close to Juneau, so tomorrow is Juneau and the Glacier Venture. Yeah, today's the Jeep thing, so we'll get that later today. Yeah. Let's go explore. Although now it's a private cruise ship port, this area has some rich native history. The Huna Tlingit are the original inhabitants of Glacier Bay. They're the indigenous people of the Pacific Northwest of North America. Evidently, their name means people of the tides. Fur traders arrived on Huna shores in the 1880s. Schools, churches, and stores soon followed. In 1912, the Huna Packing Company built the first salmon cannery in the area, which today is Icy Strait Point. Ownership traded hands several times before the Icy Strait Salmon Company purchased the property in 1932. While the cannery ceased to produce salmon in 1953, the cannery was used by the renowned Huna Fishing Fleet as a maintenance and storage facility until the late 1990s. 
authentic Get- Alaskan orange slices. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> In the mid-1990s, the Huna Totem Corporation bought the cannery and created what you see today. The first ship sailed into port in 2004, opening a second dock in 2020. Do you want to go find some crabs? Yes, I'm hungry. Okay. Currently, 85% of the staff at Icy Strait Point are local Tlingit from Huna. To get to the tourist area on the other side, you can either take the gondola or you can hike through the woods to get there. We decided to take the gondola. Yes, it was cold and rainy. So we just walked around a little bit, but of course we were hungry and we decided on the Crab House. There are a couple of other restaurants in this area, but they're further inland and um, we just wanted to stay a little bit closer to the main part of this particular area. We were really excited about getting some Alaskan King Crab. But they were out of King Crab. (laughs) (laughs) So we just got some snow crab. Additionally, they had no crackers to open the shells, so we were just kind of manhandling it caveman style. Yeah, it was it was really strange. I mean, there's even signs that say no crackers. I don't know. Unfortunately, the crab was just okay, but we were limited in our options. Yeah. I've got my phone on a lanyard, so it's <laughs> so <laughs> high. <laughs> we're back on the gondola. We have a couple hours until our excursion, so, you know, I'm tired and I need to rest, so we're going to go back to the ship. <laughs> After lunch, we just walked around the shops a little bit and then we went back to rest before our big wildlife Jeep tour. Yeah, you know we love some wildlife. You ready for round two? Let's go. Nap, <laughs> done, going back out and doing a Jeep tour. Woo! Everybody in our group decided to go on this particular excursion, so it was just a fun group outing. So this is a drive yourself tour, but you follow along a tour guide. Phil and I didn't plan our matching jackets. (laughs) We're matching but opposite. But matching opposites, right. We set out to see some serious wildlife. You know we are in in Alaska after all. Yeah, it's part of our main thing of going here is to see some wildlife. Unfortunately, it was kind of hard to hear our guide narrate once we started driving because the jeeps are kind of noisy and you could hear the wind but you really couldn't hear a lot of what he was saying yeah we were listening to him over the radio he was kind of transmitting from his jeep and so it's kind of one way we don't get to ask any questions or anything but it was it was okay it was chilly and misting the entire time and the first half didn't reveal any animals well we did see one deer in town on our way out the very beginning yep we (laughs) saw a black-tailed deer we did drive by some areas where the guide would stop and say this is where you'll see mama bears teaching her cubs to fish there weren't any bears there when we drove by it of course he just showed us pictures on his phone as proof (laughs) yeah they were fighting yeah she was protecting her cubs after i took this picture a second cub comes crawling out on the road basically we just drove these jeeps down this gravel road for i don't know 45 minutes or so saw a bunch of trees didn't see any wildlife met up with the group and Mm -hmm. took some pictures that little area there where we met up with everybody was really pretty with the mountains and the water behind us. Mm -hmm. You can even see down to where the uh, cruise ship was. Mm -hmm. But not so much as a squirrel. (laughs) And then unfortunately the trip back is the exact same road that we took in. So we had the same results, not a single animal. We stopped at the river again, but there were still no bears, still no mama bears teaching their babies how to fish. It yeah. wasn't quite salmon season yet when we were there. So we were there at the end of June. And I guess had we waited a few more weeks, then the salmon would be coming around and therefore the bears and the moose would be out a little bit more. Yeah, so that combined with our just general bad luck. If you've watched us for a while, you know we just don't see wildlife where there are supposed to be wildlife. <laughs> so that was it. We just went back, met up with everyone and The ship sailed all through the night to our next destination that we woke up to the next morning. Yeah, and our next stop was the main attraction. This is the one we were super excited about in Juneau because we had an awesome helicopter tour to a glacier. It's a glorious, beautiful day here in Juneau, Juneau, Alaska. I don't think we're gonna get to go on our helicopter tour. It's raining. I gotta go back inside, I think. 
So we're starting a list. And this is reason number one, RVing is better than cruising, is we're here for like eight hours. Yeah. And the this one, is the weather. The, the one big excursion that we were so pumped for that made us kind of even say yes to this cruise in the first place. Mm -hmm. Was the helicopter to a glacier and a little bit of a hike on a glacier. It's canceled. Yeah, canceled because of this. And there's no other option. There's no like, hey, let's stay an extra day. And the Maybe thing we is, we talk. understand. Like, yeah. we, we get it. They can't yeah. do it. It's not the, it's not the cruise line's fault. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that. So just relax. Chill out. Just relax. <laughs> okay, we're, we're a little tense because, you know, we want to get off this ship. Yeah, we're kind of stuck four in days. here. So, you know, with RVing, you can stay longer if you want, or you can leave sooner if you don't like it. And if you're stuck inside, at least it's in your own space. Mm -hmm. And we're in this port. Apparently, there are four or five cruise ships pulling in today. Four, in, in addition to ours, there's In addition four to ours. And we're the smallest ship, so we're stuck out here in the water taking liberty. I call them liberty boats because that's what they call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, what do they call them here? They Shuttles? call them tenders. Tenders? Mm -hmm. So I have to wait like a long line to get on a little tiny boat to go across over there and get rained on. Our friends went and they basically turned around and came right back Yeah. because it's just so gross outside. And there's just, you know, like 14,000 people are expected to get off these cruise ships today and be over there in Juno. I think a good 10,000 are staying on the boats. Yeah, <laughs> all the same But at least time. if we were on the pier, we could walk off, check it out and walk back on, not wait in line over there, wait in line over here. Yeah, and it's already one o'clock and, and we're supposed to be back on the ship by I think four mm -hmm. to set sail again. So I, I think we're just gonna go walk around the boat. We get peace and quiet. <laughs> it's on an empty elevator. Usually the elevators are packed. We just stayed on the ship. We didn't even feel like going into town and walking around because it was just such a cruddy day. Half the ship was went off anyhow, I think, just to explore and to walk around Juno. Uh, so the ship was pretty empty, so we decided to just kind of walk around the ship and take a tour of the ship while half the people were gone and eat. I mean, and then eat some more because that's, that's kind of what you do on a cruise, I guess, right? Yeah, this is true. What is it but we? They have puppies in the Beyonce? The copter's going on here. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. I'm glad I have a sailor with me because I, I, I can't get it. I can't keep it straight. Forward, aft. I got the forward and aft, but not the starboard. Okay, buddy. Easy killer. There's nobody outside. I don't understand. Don't, don't. Chad, come on. Oh my gosh. We went back to our balcony and got the zoom lens out and spotted some more eagles. <laughs> At least we got eagles. We got lots of eagles on this trip. <laughs> we did make reservations for the Italian restaurant that night and had a nice little dinner date with a view. Yes, date night. Yeah, just the two of us mm -hmm. and like maybe thirty or forty other people. Yeah, but not at our <laughs> not at our table. Yeah, ditching the group tonight. Yeah, it'll be good because they can have a table for ten. Oh yeah, we can take our seats. We should tell them. We finally have a view out of our balcony and not fog. That's yeah. great. I mean, I'm so surprised with the way things have been going today, like, yeah. <laughs> or this whole trip, I should say. And Stacy's missing it all in the tub. <laughs> yeah, she just, she's now getting dressed. <laughs> she's gonna have she wet hair. Window, she kept on the window. From what she sees, it doesn't look like yeah. much. Yeah. You're missing it. So I'm gonna get dressed now. Okay, yeah. And then she tells me, the tub won't drain. Oh no. The next day was another at sea day, but this was a special at sea day. It was special because we were going to get um, some great views of the Hubbard Glacier, and it was also our friend Christina's birthday. Pop up there. <laughs> I'll put the link down below. 
I, well, I just said I'm using their audio and what they're saying. So listen to what they're saying. This, this is what we're working See, this with is here. how you teamwork right yeah. here. When you're on vacation, you don't really want to do a lot of work. So That's you right. guys, you That's guys right. did the work and the research. I just did like a quick Wikipedia. <laughs> Boom, done. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of neat. They took the ship in and basically did circles. So we got to see a lot of the glacier over and over again. And the weather cleared up, which mm -hmm. was fantastic. The sun actually came out to our surprise. And it was a beautiful trip around the glacier. We got some fabulous shots. There was a small group of passengers that got to go on a, a, a little excursion boat up to the glacier. I'm not sure if they went on it or what, but we didn't book that because we figured, heck, we're gonna be on a glacier the day before, so why do that? Right. So that was a bummer, but yeah. we still got to see it and it was really cool. Yeah. And that glacier and then the surrounding mountains, it was just breathtaking. It was just gorgeous. It was so cool to see like some of the chunks of the glacier ice floating around and we got to share that with all of our friends because of course the balconies were all open to each other and so it was just it was a really fun day at sea. We finally got to see stuff. Yes. I'm and just I'm, I'm trying to cover my eyes because the <laughs> glare from the glacier. It's very glary and the Hubbard Glacier is right right there. Look at that. That's amazing. We started out getting to the glacier and it was just nothing but fog. So we, we figured we were screwed. We were screwed on this mm -hmm. one too, but um, no, no, it's, it turned out to be gorgeous. Fantastic. And it's warmed up, so. Mm -hmm. What I thought was really amazing was how much green there was on the mountains. It was such a neat juxtaposition of all the super green along with the snow and ice still on them. It was just really cool to see. It was also neat because they made really cool waterfalls from the melting ice. This glacier is named in honor of Gardner Hubbard, the first president of the National Geographic Society and the father-in-law of Alexander Graham Bell. The glacier flows over 75 miles and calving into the sea with a face six miles wide. This glacier is the longest tidewater glacier in North America. Tidewater glaciers are ones that flow directly into the sea. Unlike many glaciers around the world that are retreating due to climate change, Hubbard Glacier has been advancing for over a century. This unique behavior is a result of a combination of its size, the topography of the region, and the amount of snowfall it receives. The advance of the Hubbard Glacier has periodically blocked the entrance to the Russell Fjord, creating a natural dam. When this happens, the Russell Fjord can transform into a massive freshwater lake until the glacier dam gives way and releases the trapped water in a dramatic event. I would love to see that. I like to say the word fjord. <laughs> That's a fun word. Fjord? Fjord. Hubbard Glacier is known for its spectacular calving events where massive pieces of ice, some as large as multi-story buildings, crash into the sea. And then that evening for our friend Christina's birthday, we had a nice big group dinner. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tommy. Happy birthday to you. We have made it to Haynes. Oh my gosh, we're off the boat. What? <laughs> oh, finally, in a few days. We're gonna see if this time around we can see some wildlife. Or perhaps we might jinx the entire boat <laughs> with our luck. Yeah. <laughs> the sun decided to come out. We got. We just are walking into Haynes and Chad starts singing, Wait, we get a Haynes on you. And now that's all I'm gonna have in my head all day. If you start to lose it, I'll bring it back for you. Thanks, I appreciate okay. it. Yeah, so we're walking to the end of this pier to meet our tour guide, I guess. We're taking a, it says motor coach, so bus. The boat? I think Chilkoot, I, I don't know how you say it, Chilkoot River and we get on a boat and I guess they feed us at some point today. Oh yeah. So we'll see. We don't really know because our, no our main excursion got canceled. So we chose a riverboat excursion out of Haines. Um, we booked it through the ship, but in hindsight, I think I would have rather booked with the actual tour company themselves because what I've been reading is that the ships keep a lot of that money. The company that we booked was the Chilkat River Adventures, and they were awesome. The staff was super friendly, 
and our captain was awesome. So as soon as we got there, we can see the boats that were going on and right away we got our dose of wildlife. There were some bald eagles that apparently like to hang out right there and we got to see them fly around and swoop down and grab fish. It was really cool. Yeah, it was awesome. And they are so familiar with the staff there that like Captain Travis could just call the eagles and they came to, they came to him. So that was kind of cool to see. And then the captain will take us um, along all of the different channels of the Chilkat River, which was great. He's very informative. He talks about not just wildlife, but a lot of the like flora and fauna and the different glacial formations that we see. The mountain range in front of us, those are called the Tonkshan Mountains. It's a native word. It means mountains to the north. And here in a little while, well, it's probably going to be about 40 minutes or so. My timing is somewhat correct. We'll be uh, up at the end of that mountain range. Then another thing you're going to notice is that I zigzag all over the place when we're heading upriver and downriver. You know, where it's wider like this, you kind of wonder, well, shoot, why is this guy clear over here by shore? And why is he zigging to the other side of the river? The reason I'm doing that is I'm reading the river. Okay, what that means is I'm watching the characteristics of the surface of the water. But man, right off the bat, within like the first five minutes of our mm -hmm. of our excursion, we saw a bear. Can you believe it? Yeah, so we were super stoked. We've seen eagles, we've now seen a bear. We just knew the day was gonna be full of wildlife. Yes. But you know our luck. <laughs> <laughs> So anyhow guys, getting to see that little black bear taking a little bath in the river was so fun and it, that sucker was pretty close to us which was really cool. But I gotta tell you, when they say that you need to dress warm for this excursion, you need to listen because it was freezing and I personally had layers on and a hat and a hood and a raincoat but they also give you an extra blanket and they give you this heavy duty like waterproof raincoat to put on top of everything use it yes because i take was still cold take the big coat you're gonna want it you're gonna want it chad was also really cold because if you think about it when he gets those river boats going up to top speed it gets super super cold so just be prepared i thought i was prepared enough but i was still really cold but other than being cold it was an amazing trip yeah, we did see lots of eagles though. And one thing that we learned from Captain Travis is that bald eagles can drown. Who knew? So this nest here is about 20 years old. They've been coming back to this nest for that long. At five years old is when they get rid of their, what we call their juvenile feathers and they grow their dark feathers and their white heads and white tails. And they can drown, they stick their talons kind of in front of them right under their chin and they reach down and they grab something they have a tendon in their talon that doesn't let them really release it they have to bring their talons back up forward in order to release or drop something so if they grab a salmon that's too big they will have to either swim it to shore with their wings or the fish if it's really way too big it'll drag them down the bottom so I'd like to talk about vegetation here, right? So on the right, you can see all the evergreen trees. And then down on the river bottom on both sides, you can see the deciduous trees. So the evergreen trees that we have here are Sitka spruce and hemlock. We can use both of those trees for firewood, lumber. In the early spring, we pick the fresh little spruce tips, the new growth off the branches. They're bright green. We pick those. 
and we make simple syrup out of them. We use them as garnishes on salad. They're loaded with vitamin C, so we make tea, all sorts of things, right? But I gotta tell you, there were some times on this trip where I was choked up. I got tears in my eyes because it was so beautiful. So even though we didn't see a whole lot of wildlife, we did get to see some, so don't get me wrong. What we saw was great, but just being out in nature and being in the middle of nowhere was just breathtaking. It was, it was unbelievable, and I really, really enjoyed that, that adventure. And also up at the uh, the turnaround, because we basically went uh, up the river. Technically, we went down the river, then back up the river. And at the turnaround, there were some really cool glaciers up in the mountains that the captain pointed out. Yeah, and he also stops at this lake, which is all like glacial water, right? Turns off the motors of the boat, and it is just silent, and it's just nothing but nature, and it was peaceful and calming. Great pictures answered a lot of questions for us, talked about his experience in the area. It was a really, really neat tour. And again, even though we didn't see any moves or any other bears or bears sliding down the, um, the avalanche spot that he pointed out, it was still great and we highly recommend it. It was an awesome tour. Once we got back to the docks, the staff had a nice light lunch set up for us and hot beverages which was great because we were freezing did we mention and then we hopped back on the bus which took us back into Haines on the way back into town we actually passed by some RV parks along the road there which was pretty cool I like seeing that and I like checking out some RV parks when we're in different areas let's us know if we have an RV up there there are lots of places to stay yeah and then we were still hungry because the the lunch that they had for us was was kind of light that was a fun tour. I'm really glad we did it. Mm -hmm. We didn't see as much wildlife as we had hoped, but we still did. And it was just, it was beautiful. It was just beautiful. I actually yeah. choked up at one point because it was so beautiful. Saw a bear. <laughs> <laughs> we thought for sure when we saw that bear immediately, we were going to see a bunch of bears. Yeah. Let's try some tacos. I think we should. So we just found out we can take our tacos to the brewery. So I'm headed over there to get some beer while Tara gets our tacos. What'd you get? I got an IPA. It's like a double IPA. It doesn't look like an IPA. No, it's good. Is it, you like it? It's, it's, yeah, it's very happy, very strong. Yeah. Walking back to the ship, we got to take a little walk through a waterfront RV park right there called Oceanside RV Park. It was nice because it was all paved, the sites were nice and big, and a bunch of them backed right onto the water, so that would be awesome for our toy hauler to put the back deck down. Yeah. Let us know if you've stayed in any of these RV parks in Haines, or just let us know in general where your favorite RV parks are in Alaska. So after checking out that RV park, we just walked back to the boat and got back into our room where we could watch some more eagles, and we also got to watch our friends come back from their tour via boat. Of course, our friend Phil is wearing shorts. Phil is always in shorts. What is wrong with him? <laughs> But of course, as we were leaving that area, we got more amazing waterfalls and glaciers visible from our balcony as we left the port. So this cruise is not done for us yet because it is an 11 day cruise. So coming up, we share part two of our Alaska cruise adventures and shenanigans with our friends.